I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIM TV, Velocities in Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. Tom, I'm really excited to Me too. this album. I don't even think we told anyone we were going to do this one. No, we didn't. We just, because it was just random. We yeah, I think we, you just told me the other day, yeah. like, let's review Stankonia. Yeah. Outcast Stankonia, does that yeah. sound good to you guys? Mm -hmm. Because we've both been listening to that album a lot lately. Yeah, we have. And we're like, we haven't reviewed this. We haven't reviewed any Outcast. Let's Why do not? it. Yeah. Let's, let's put our thoughts of Stankonia out there. Because, I mean, it's Stankonia. I mean, you gotta like it. Mm -hmm. So fresh, it's so clean! It's so fresh and it so clean. clean. Clean, clean. Very, very, very clean. 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 Go for it. Tell okay. Me, now, what is this album? Now, this is one of those albums, I have to give the disclaimer before we jump into it, that... It's a rap album. Well, <laughs> thank you, Jake. You're um, it's one of those that already... It, it came out, you know, in the late 90s. 99. Already... Uh, pretty much everything that could be said about this has been said. Right, so we're just so, having fun. You know, we're, yeah, we're not really going to be able to bring too much new to the table other than just our own experience, perspective, and opinion. So we'll just go ahead and jump in from there now that you know that. Uh, I, I started listening to this album more recently. I've been on a huge outcast kick, um, just trying to familiarize myself with their discography more because they're a group that I've actually been listening to for a long time, but not, not in too much detail. And I'm like, you know, I know that these guys are really well liked um, by critics and hip-hop fans alike, so I want to I wanna get a better general idea of their work. And, and this album is a monster. It's 24 tracks and it's really long. Now there's lots of skits in there, um, but, but just the actual content, like the bulk, the beef of the actual tracks are so solid. And, and the reason this album is so great is because there's so much variety in those tracks. The actual tracks, like the samples they're using, the beats, um, the way that the vocals work together, uh, I mean, the lyrics, like everything about them. But on a 24 track hip hop album, you also don't have them repeating themselves much. No. Um, that's the thing, I feel, like, I feel like a lot of other hip hop artists have trouble um, expanding their sound palette. While they may be able to do some, some cool different rhythms and lyrical themes, they get stuck with a lot of the same kinds of sounds backing those up. And here, you couldn't get more variety. Well, and Dr. Dre's 2001 came out about the same time yeah. as this, right? Think about how vastly different those two albums are uh -huh. and just how pivotal they are in, in, in the rap music genre. I uh -huh. mean, it, it is just two different directions, yet there's a lot of similarities between mm -hmm. the albums. They're longer albums with a lot of skits that, yeah. that really pushed rap forward and, and did some cool things. There are tracks on here. I mean, when this album, first of all, there's the, the intro, that which I, I think is always good when, when a band starts off a big album with an intro track. Mm -hmm. But then when you have going straight into Gasoline Dreams track two, which I love that track. It has an energy. You know, these guys acknowledge that they were influenced by the rave culture, and it's totally evident on that track, Gasoline Dreams. That just it just has just it, it's an outdoors concert sort of feel to it and it just it has a ton of energy I love it I get way into mm -hmm. it um, but then there's other classics on here like Miss Jackson you know that's something I sing to my wife every day <laughs> I, I can't get over it um, so fresh so clean um, B.O.B. that's one of the best rap known as one of the best rap mm -hmm. songs ever made yeah and I can totally see why I watched you know I put put the video on the web page it's really cool I like it um, it, it, it has kind of an, a, that eclectic crazy fun um, sort of side to it but it also is you know bombs over Baghdad you know mm -hmm. it's it's talking about something that that's important um, to the world and and kind of um, what was funny is that it came out in 99 that was way before we actually went to war with Iraq yeah. and had all that stuff so had a lot of meaning. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, now, one thing I do want to address about this album, want to get out of the way real quick, are the skits. Yeah. Because skits are something that I've always had a really mixed opinion about when it comes to rap music. Sure. Because they're, they're all over the place. I mean, they're not on every rap album, but they're on a lot of them. Um, and this is, like, one of the huger ones. And even, you know, Outkast's earlier work, um, I'm thinking of particularly, like, Equimini, has a lot of skits on it. Um, here... I feel like they work for the most part, actually. A lot of times they bother me on other records. Here it worked because they found a way to make it work in. Now, not all the time. Um, for example, track three, I'm Cool. I, I feel like that was kind of an unnecessary one. Um, but also, like, Kim and Cookie interlude mm -hmm. going right before I'll Call Before mm -hmm. I Come works perfectly. Like, it sets up the song so much, and, and it brings in that cheesy kind of humor before the music even starts. Right. So that then when that cheesy music starts, mm -hmm. you have that cheesy synth line, right. you know. 
It just sounds so crappy, but it's perfect. Uh, I'll call before I come. It has to be one of the catchiest songs I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. It gets stuck in your head, and we've been all singing it all day. Yeah. We cannot stop. It's it's a good song. I'm, I, the only thing I really want to criticize this album for mm -hmm. is I felt like it, it's, first of all, it's long, I think a little too unjustified yeah. in its length. Um, I think that pretty much after you said Red Velvet, after you know the last third of the album, I feel like, uh -huh. there's a lot of unnecessary I totally there. agree. For me, yeah. For me, it's just about perfect up to track like 17, yeah. the, the question mark track. And then the rest of the tracks just just don't bring a whole lot new. I mean, they do in some of the beats and some of the, the kinds of sounds they're using, but I just feel like the tracks aren't quite as catchy. They don't quite make as much of an impact as me uh, to me as a listener. Um, so it, I think it does slump a little bit, but you also just have to love the fact that they were able to work in such a variety of sounds, such a variety of moods. I mean, there are some more serious tracks on here, and then there are some just absolute slapstick, goofy-ass, nonsense songs. And it's it's all about the fast delivery uh -huh. and, and the really detailed production behind it. You know, this it was this album was truly ahead of its time. I mean, yeah. I, you go back and listen to these songs, and there's artists today that are can't make songs sound this good. This was done in 1999 before, you know, everyone had laptops in front of them, you know, no mm -hmm. one, we, you know, it was the mid 2000s when everyone got a laptop and started having music software on. That hadn't happened yet here. So this is kind of, I really do believe ahead of its time, kind of paved the way for future rap artists to come in and, and, and take from this style. And, and, you know, it's just so much fun to listen to. It's so fresh and so clean. It's so fresh and so clean. It, I, I can't get enough of it. I mm -hmm. really like it. Um, Tom, question for you. Yeah. Would you put this in the top five rap albums of all time? <sighs> would you? That's tough. I, I was thinking about this earlier. I would have to, I would have to listen to a lot more rap before I could really make a good call on that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I don't think it is. I, I, I think you could make an argument for like top 10, top 15, mm -hmm. but especially like if you're going way back and like putting yeah. like the DOC in Well, there. and especially if you're thinking in terms of influence, for sure. I think while this was obviously ahead of the 2000s right. and influenced a lot there, still you go back to all the stuff in the early 90s, oh, sure. the 80s, and I mean, that's really what set up even these guys to be able to do this. Yeah. So but it, but it, I mean, it, I, I think it's a, it's a front runner for like definitely. consideration. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's one of the, It's one of the best. Cool. What do you guys think? What's your what's your top five favorite rap albums? Let us know. Stank Coney on that list. Like we said, we like it a lot. Not quite there yet. I'm going 90 on this one. I'm going 91. So so we I'm like it a lot, like it. But, yeah. but I think it's a cusp below, like the best of all time. Still a great record. Really mm -hmm. fun. Lots of just classic tracks on it. What do you guys think? You love Outkast. What's your favorite Outkast album? And we want to know top five rap albums of all time. Leave us a comment. www.velocitiesandmusic.com. YouTube, probably where you're watching this. Right down there, leave us a comment. Also, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. That's where we do most of our talking with you guys, and you guys are an integral role in what we do here because it's all about listening to the music that you guys listen to, mm -hmm. and then we talk about that music in the music review. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward. Everyone forget one nine, nine, nine.